And they pride, yes, and they pride on in the library. And they pride, yes, and they pride on in the library. Welcome to the Indie Pram podcast on Independence Live Radio. Scotland the Brief by Gordon McIntyre Kemp, Part 3. Scotland's Finance Industry. The financial sector is a segment of the economy consisting of organisations providing financial services to organisational and commercial customers. The sector is made up of banks, insurance firms, investors, pension firms, mortgage providers and other lenders. In brief, the Scottish finance sector contributes more than £13 billion to the Scottish economy every year and employs more than 152,000 people in Scotland. The sector contains around 29,000 businesses in Scotland, ranging from micro-business right up to some of Scotland's largest businesses, such as banks and insurance firms. International exports for this sector total £7.2 billion, making it a key exporting sector. Financial services in Scotland are forecasted to undergo GVA growth of almost 20% by 2024 compared with 2014, whilst business services are expected to grow almost 40% in the same time frame. Finance is a major employer, supporting 5.9% of national employment and generating about 9.4% of Scotland's GVA. The key geographical focus of these activities within Scotland are Edinburgh, Glasgow, Aberdeen, and Fife. Key facts. Scotland is the UK's third largest financial and related services exporter and the largest global financial hub in the UK outside of London. Scotland is one of Europe's top financial centres and Scotland is home to some of Europe's largest financial services companies. The most recently available data shows that Scotland has the highest productivity in the financial services industry in the UK outside of London. In the year preceding the Brexit vote, the number of jobs in Scotland's financial services grew 6.6%, whilst its financial exports increased by 9%. Figures since the Brexit vote, 2016-2017, show the number of jobs shrank 6%. However, Scotland's financial exports still increased by 7%. Threats to Scotland's finance industry The single largest threat to the industry is Brexit. The EU accounts for 36% of Scotland's growing global exports in finance and insurance. Brexit chaos threatens Scotland's success by creating trade barriers and uncertainty. Companies do not know what type of post-Brexit deal will be agreed or if they will contain financial passporting across Europe for finance companies. Having access to highly skilled personnel from the EU could be the most effective way to cover the skills gap in the industry, not just in the finance industry itself, but especially in the fintech industry that supports growth and innovation in financial services and helps keep the sector competitive. Some financial companies have already decided to relocate part or all of their businesses to Europe, having already relocated more than £800 billion worth of assets out of the UK and into the EU as a result of Brexit. This could also be an opportunity for Scotland's finance sector, should an independent Scotland be in the EU or have single market access and financial passporting agreements with the EU via European Free Trade Association membership. In this instance, Scotland would be offer the most attractive, cost-effective and realistic relocation sites for UK financial services companies. Thereby maintaining an EU presence, Scotland would be much more attractive than Ireland, which has already benefited from Brexit. Besides representing some 5.9% of Scotland's total employment, finance and related services account for a greater share of Scotland's economy compared to other areas in the UK outside of London, and so Scotland's finance sector is substantially at risk from Brexit. Scotland's life sciences sector. Life sciences is a wide-ranging industry sector encompassing pharmaceuticals, biomedical science, medical biotechnology, environmental sciences and even some food processing. Basically, these are the sciences that have to do with organisms such as human beings, plants and animals. In brief, this sector's turnover is more than £5.9 billion a year and growing fast. 
Life Sciences experienced a 52% growth in turnover between 2010 and 2016 and a 16% growth in employment. Around 770 companies employ more than 40,000 people in Scotland. The industry body, Life Sciences Scotland, expects the Scottish Life Science Cluster to reach a turnover of £8 billion by 2025, which makes it a key sector in Scotland's future economy. Scotland's universities are amongst the most influential scientific research institutions in the world for pharmaceuticals. Dundee is currently in first place beating the Massachusetts Institute for Technology for the top spot. Edinburgh University comes in sixth place, ahead of the University of California at Berkeley. By comparison, there are only two remaining UK universities on the list. Between 2009 and 2015, Scotland's universities created 60 life science spin-out companies, more than any other part of the UK. Although there are life sciences businesses across the country, it is an especially important industry in Tayside. Dundee University's role in life sciences research supports 16% of all jobs in Tayside. Approximately a quarter of the industry's turnover relates to exports, with £1.25 billion exported last year. Key facts. Scotland possesses one of the largest life sciences clusters in Europe and has the largest community of animal bioscience and aquaculture researchers with more than 1,000 researchers. Veterinary science in Scotland wins more than 50% of UK veterinary funding. Scotland is renowned for its veterinary science expertise with its two veterinary colleges at Edinburgh and Glasgow universities ranked first and second in the UK. Almost a third of the UK's veterinary graduates are trained in Scotland each year. Scientists at the Roslyn Institute in Edinburgh were the first in the world to clone a mammal, named Dolly the Sheep. The Institute has helped generate annual productivity gains of £247 million through its breeding and genetics research. In Scotland, 170 life science startups with a success rate of 85% were created between 2009 and 2015. Threats to Scotland's life sciences sector The life sciences sector is a major exporter and one that is also highly linked to EU research and European networks for collaboration. Tariffs and non-tariff barriers will make it more difficult for life sciences businesses to trade throughout the EU. Regulatory alignment with EU standards for clinical trials and agreements on mutual recognition are vital to this sector and under threat. Importing materials and access to skilled European labour will be affected, which might also decrease foreign direct investment. Brexit threatens up to £300 million in pharmaceutical exports alone to the EU, with an additional £130 million threatened to the rest of the world that will be disrupted when the UK loses access to trade deals the EU has in place with other countries. Moreover, many products in the life sciences industry are made in complex supply chains, with each stage of production taking place in many different locations, specialising in different areas. This means that companies based in Scotland could be forced out of the European supply chain by Brexit. The UK must comply with European regulations and directives in medicines and healthcare and the UK's own regulatory body has had lots of influence shaping European regulations, partly because the European Medical Agency, which has now relocated to Amsterdam because of Brexit, was located in London. The EMA monitors and evaluates pharmaceutical products before granting them access to the single market. If the UK does not join the European Economic Area, it will no longer be part of this process, and companies in the UK will then have to submit separate authorization to the UK's regulatory authority. This increased demand on the UK's regulatory body could slow the authorisation procedure. Scotland's Chemical Sciences Industry This sector includes a wide range of organisations researching and creating chemical products and solutions. This would include biofuels, battery storage, some cosmetics, microbe cultures, interactive labelling, food ingredients and chemical refining. Closely connected to the life sciences cluster, chemical sciences also include industrial biotechnology, but not medical biotechnology solutions. In brief, the chemical sciences sector has a turnover of around £8.7 billion, of which £3.9 billion is exported, making it one of Scotland's leading exporting sectors. 
There are around 235 organisations working in the sector, employing approximately 11,750 people, and supporting the jobs of a further 70,000 indirectly. Scottish universities outperform their UK counterparts on chemical science research. The University of Edinburgh's East Chem Research School is the UK's leading chemistry school, with 95% of research papers classed as world-leading or internationally excellent by REF 2014. This includes major multinational corporations with Scottish operations, university research institutions, small entrepreneurial biotechnology labs, and of course Grangemouth Chemical Refinery and Cluster. Scotland has three universities ranked in the top 20 for undergraduate chemistry in the Guardian UK University Guide. St Andrews, Heriot Watt and Edinburgh. Key facts. Scotland's chemical sciences research and development is consistently ranked in the top three in the world. The chemical sciences has the highest GVA per employee of any industry in Scotland at 181,700 in 2016. Scotland's chemical science industry exports £3.9 billion a year. That's 12% of Scotland's total exports. This means it is third only to food and drink and professional services in terms of export value. A new £56 million medicines manufacturing innovation centre is planned for Renfrewshire, supporting 80 jobs, offering pharma companies a service to develop and adopt new techniques into their manufacturing processes, helping to further Scotland as a global centre of excellence in chemical sciences. A new European hub in Grangemouth for the Chemical Sciences Cluster is to be established, enhancing Scotland's position in the European chemical science scene. Threats to Scotland's chemical sciences industry Chemical sciences will be affected by Brexit in a similar way to life sciences. In general, science and technology are more interconnected with Europe than some other sectors because they depend on funding and information sharing. As this is one of Scotland's largest exporting sectors, tariff and non-tariff barriers will clearly reduce trade throughout the EU. Again, regulatory alignment with EU standards is vital to taking products to market quickly. The chemical sector faces tariffs of up to 4%. With current low profit margins, companies clustered around Grangemouth said they risk losing out to more competitively priced EU rivals. Brexit will have an impact on the chemical industry driven by changing regulation requirements, such as EU registration, evaluation, authorisation and restriction of chemicals. Regulatory consistency amongst EU nations makes trade of chemical products easier and in fact even possible. A no-deal Brexit would have a significant impact on chemicals trade between the UK and the EU. Scotland's Digital Industries Digital Industries is a relatively new term that captures the evolving nature of technology in the economy. It blends together the older concept of information and communications technology companies and those that are not specifically ICT but operate in the dynamic digital economy which includes e-commerce, e-business, supporting infrastructure with hardware, software, telecom, communications equipment, software publishing for business operations, software publishing for entertainment, for example the digital games industry, and online publishing of information and data. In brief, it is predicted to become the fastest growing industry in Scotland up to 2024 at 38% growth in GVA terms. That is twice as fast as the overall growing rate of the whole economy. This is predicted to reach a target of 5.2 billion GVA in 2024, which will create new and highly skilled jobs. The latest available figures demonstrate that approximately 8,800 digital industry companies employ 91,600 people in Scotland. Furthermore, the sector is growing so quickly that it is predicted to create an extra 12,800 highly skilled jobs per year. Scotland's digital industry sector is one of its fastest growing and a major employer, contributing 3.9 billion GVA growth of 64% in an eight-year period and it's speeding up. Dundee is globally recognised as one of Europe's leading gaming industry centres, attracting talent and companies from all over the world. Digital technology is also a major part of the Edinburgh economy, employing more than 20,000 people. Scotland is a globally important player in the software sector. 
Foreign direct investment in the digital sector overall grew 56% between 2016 and 2017. The sector's foreign direct investment also grew 14% between 2017 and 2018, making it the joint largest sector to attract investment into Scotland in 2018. 15 universities deliver undergraduate computing science degrees and 14 deliver postgraduate qualifications. The total number of computing science enrolments has increased 20% since 2012-2013 to 2015. Scotland's digital industries are helping boost its productivity levels, pushing Scotland into the top 50% of OECD for productivity. Key Facts Edinburgh was the fastest growing tech hub in the UK in 2017 and has been ranked the most active tech and data innovation city in the UK after London. The number of companies in Scotland's digital game sector soared 1,900% in the decade leading to 2017. Scotland's software development sector includes around 7,300 companies employing more than 42,000 people and that sector grew 90% in the decade leading up to 2017. The digital games industry has 1,537 full-time games development staff and supports an additional 2,810 jobs. 75% of Scottish digital technology companies boosted their sales in 2018, compared with 68% in the previous year. Threats to Scotland's digital industries Digital industries is clearly one of the fastest growing sectors in the Scottish economy and continuing that growth is key to the prosperity of the nation. Some 80% of Scotland's tech companies expect to employ more people in the coming year. However, the industry's growth is outstripping the supply of skilled workers and a third of companies say they find it a challenge to recruit the people they need to keep growing. This means that the digital sector requires highly skilled workers to relocate to Scotland from other nations to avoid its growth being damaged through skills shortages. However, there has been a 70% drop in net EU migration to the UK since the Brexit vote and although specific research is not clear on the issue, feelings of no longer being welcome and concerns about the stability of the UK economy post-Brexit will potentially impact on highly skilled migrants' decisions to relocate to the UK rather than to the EU nations with growing digital industries. With such a big demand for new highly skilled workers, the digital sector is vulnerable to even small shortages in skilled labour. The fact that these will be higher paying roles will not protect the sector from skill shortages if workers don't want to come to the UK. Scotland's Creative Industries Creative industries include economic activities based on individual and communal creativity, talent and skill, which can be commercialised to create employment and wealth. Success in the sector relies upon creating uniqueness in a product or service and especially one that can be protected by intellectual property and copyright law. It is a diverse sector. Participants may be involved in fashion design, architecture, marketing, graphic, product design, films, theatre, TV, radio, photographic industries, music and dance, publishing and even art galleries and arts and crafts. In brief, nearly 15,000 organisations make up this sector in Scotland and they employ about 77,000 people and contribute 4.9 billion GVA to the Scottish economy. The sector's turnover increased by 30% in the decade leading up to 2017 and has been identified by the Scottish Government as one of its priority growth sectors. Scotland's creative industries also put Scotland on the map internationally with film, clothing and arts festivals attracting millions of people annually to Scotland. A highly visible component of the sector is the Edinburgh Festival and Fringe, which combined attract approximately 4.5 million visitors a year to one of the world's oldest, largest and most highly regarded creative festivals. To put that in perspective, 23% more people attended the Edinburgh festivals live than attended the 64 games played at the last Football World Cup. The Edinburgh International Festival presents a programme featuring the finest performers and ensembles from the worlds of dance, opera, music and theatre. The Fringe started as an unofficial group of eight performing companies who began their own festival on the fringe of the main one. 
Now the fringe dominates the town during the festival, with 3,548 shows taking place across 317 Edinburgh venues in 2018, performed by 30,000 artists from more than 50 countries. The creative industries is also a geographically diverse sector in Scotland. For example, Harris Tweed has grown by 52% in the last decade, and is responsible for 13% of manufacturing turnover in the Outer Hebrides, 21% of gross wages in manufacturing there, and we estimate employs around 325 people. It is also the only material in the world protected by its own Act of Parliament. Scotland has a rich literary tradition. Edinburgh is the world's first UNESCO City of Literature, designated in 2004. Scotland now has more book festivals per capita than any other country in the world, and the Edinburgh International Book Festival generated more than £1 million in 2018 alone. Key Facts The Edinburgh International Book Festival grew from just 30 events in 1983 to more than 900 in 2018, attracting 250,000 visitors in 2017 its largest audience ever and making it the world's largest book festival. Harris Tweed production increased 274% between 2009 and 2015 and the industry continues to expand today. Harris Tweed, a world-recognised multi-award winning brand, is exported to more than 50 countries across the world with customers including high-end brands such as Vivian Westwood, Alexander McQueen and Calvin Klein. In 2017, £95 million was spent on film projects in Scotland, the highest figure to date. Spending in Scotland's film and television industry has increased more than 300% in the last decade. Threats to Scotland's creative industries Some 40% of organisations and individuals working within the creative sector receive funding from the EU, at an average of £52,000 per organisation. These organisations also benefit from pan-European arts networks for collaboration. Many working in the arts are paid less than the £30,000 salary immigration threshold currently under consideration by the UK government. In this sector, highly skilled does not always translate to highly paid, and many in the sector are concerned about being able to travel for work or practice, as well as commissioning and recruiting EU-based artists. A survey conducted by Creative Scotland found that many respondents highlighted the large amount of travel they do within the EU and worries about the extra bureaucratic procedures making it financially difficult to tour or travel for work in the event of Scotland leaving the EU. Scotland's education sector. Further education is generally provided by colleges but can be provided by work-related adult and community learning institutions and even some universities. Higher education is generally offered by universities, sometimes by colleges and other academic and chartered institutions. In brief, there are 19 universities and 15 further education colleges in Scotland and they employ more than 43,700 people right across Scotland, contributing annually more than £11.3 billion to Scotland's economy. The sector has generated 82% more in GVA between 2010 and 2015 and its annual exports amount to £1.5 billion. Universities and colleges are major employers in all of Scotland's cities, bringing in skills and investment. For example, Dundee's Life Sciences cluster supports 16% of the jobs on Tayside alone. A strong higher and further education sector is vital to successful modern economies and makes a significant contribution to Scotland's human capital advantage. Higher education establishments support 142,000 jobs indirectly and 69% of directly created jobs are located in Scotland's most deprived areas. The sector provides services to 235,565 students in full-time and part-time education, of whom more than 20,945 come from other EU nations. 52,290 non-UK students studied in Scotland in 2016-2017, contributing £1.94 billion to the Scottish economy in tuition fees, living costs and other expenditure. 
Scotland's higher education sector includes some of the world's oldest universities and in the last 10 years, three universities have been established. Universities Scotland has 19 member institutions. The sector has a huge mix of academic disciplines and many are considered world leaders across many research areas. Edinburgh in Artificial Intelligence, Dundee in Digital Industries and Biotechnology, Aberdeen in Oil and Gas Technology. Key Facts Scotland has four universities in the top 200 in the world. That's more per head of population than any other country in the world except for Switzerland. The people of Scotland are the most educated in Europe. 47% of Scottish people have a university, college or vocational qualification. That's 9% higher than England and Wales, 13% higher than Northern Ireland, and a massive 17% higher than the EU average. More than 36,500 Scottish university and college applicants began their undergraduate course in 2017, an increase of 2.4%. Whilst other UK nations experienced a decline, a record number of Scottish applicants were accepted into higher education in 2017. Threats to Scotland's education sector. No prizes for guessing it's Brexit again. Post-Brexit, there will be less funding available for Scottish universities. Roughly 11% of competitively won research funding comes from the EU. When adding EU charities, industries and public bodies based in the EU, this rises to 13%, or £88.8 .8 million. Brexit will also place restrictions on Scottish universities collaborating with EU partners on research projects. Internationally conducted research benefits from collaboration with more impact and more citations. No one can yet say if the UK will remain a member of the EU-dominated European Research Area, the ERA, launched by the European Commission in 2000 to develop Europe-wide research opportunities. A no-deal Brexit, however, would take Scotland's universities out of the ERA, the Horizon Europe Science Funding Programme and the Erasmus Student Exchange Programme, which helps Scottish students to study abroad. As highly skilled migrants, European academics, of whom there are more than 5,000, will likely still be allowed to migrate to Scotland, yet they will follow the research grants, and if these are threatened, they will have to go elsewhere. In the last three years, 2,500 academics from the EU have already left Scottish universities. Brexit will also mean that Scotland will no longer be part of the EU universities and will, once again, need to charge EU students tuition fees. This will discourage EU students from coming to the UK. Some 9% of students in Scotland hail from the EU. Scotland's construction industry Buildings like homes, extensions, offices and commercial buildings come to mind when you think of the construction sector, but it also includes road and rail engineering, the building product sector, management and demolition. In brief, this is a major industry with a £17.4 billion turnover shared between 19,000 companies and is one of Scotland's largest areas of employment with 134,000 people employed directly. Construction is a major employer throughout Scotland. In the Highlands and Islands in particular, it is a significant employer, with 10% of businesses in the region being construction companies, making it the largest industry and the third largest employer. Growth in the sector is slow, but domestic extension and refurbishment work is still strong. There are, however, very little speculative commercial bills progressing due to the political uncertainty of Brexit. This is also compounded by the fact that many major public sector building projects, bridges and roads, have been completed in the last few years. Key Facts In the decade leading up to 2017, Scotland built 70,861 new homes, including 33% more affordable homes than were built in England despite England having 9.5 times Scotland's population. Between 2018 and 2022, public housing construction in Scotland is expected to grow 3.9% and in private housing by 2.9%. Following the collapse of Carillion in 2018, there are worries about major public sector facilities and construction project management companies Interserve and Capita, especially in their wider UK operations. 
major Scottish Government infrastructure projects worth £6.4 billion, which included the Queensferry Crossing and the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, have been completed. The 1.7 million square foot Edinburgh St James development will include a luxury hotel, 150 new homes, 30 restaurants, a cinema and 850,000 square feet of retail space. Dundee's waterfront is undergoing a £1 billion redevelopment across 240 hectares, which includes cultural quarters, the design award-winning V&A Dundee, a refurbished train station, offices, hotels and residential developments. Threats to Scotland's construction industry About 4% of Scotland's construction workforce hails from other EU countries, which is a lot less exposure than the 50% or so you'll find in London and the South East. However, that could be a double-edged sword as skill shortages in London and the South East might increase wages there and attract skilled Scottish workers to fill the gaps, creating skill shortages in Scotland. There are already skill shortages and this will drive up wages, not necessarily a bad thing for the economy overall, but in the sector at a time when the lower value of the pound has meant the building materials are becoming more expensive. Continued austerity and a squeeze on public spending due to Brexit, related slower growth would also likely cut public sector infrastructure investment and slow growth in the sector further. You can purchase your own copy of Scotland The Brief at www.businessforscotland.com Indy Prime Radio Indy Prime